Congressman Byron Donalds from the beautiful, sunshiny state of Florida joins us now. Congressman, I so enjoyed seeing you for State of the Union. It was a great time. Uh, I'm so glad that you're joining us today. I got to tell you, your questioning with Yoel Roth earlier, and we played some of that, and we've been talking about it, that was pretty stunning. And you really, I think, highlighted a main problem with the memory of these executives. Oh, they don't know who they've talked to with the Biden administration, but they knew exactly the tweets to which you were referring. That's a pretty, that's an impressive selective memory that they that they put on display there. Well, actually, first, Dana, great to be with you. Um, it was very revealing because even as we were going through the different emails uh, at, that were going back and forth at Twitter about suppressing this information, I never clicked on the hyperlink. I had no idea what the tweet was even about. For him to remember very clearly, just looking at the, the URL was, was stunning to me because it is very clear that what they, the operation that I think that they set up is they had their various divisions. Every division is siloed in a way where they uh, will probably have some plausible deniability so nobody can say, oh, well, I didn't know what the left hand was doing. I'm just the right hand. But I think the, the real hardcore truth is Twitter fully knew. Mm -hmm. The employees at Twitter, the higher ups at Twitter wanted to suppress information that might damage Joe Biden because they wanted him to be president. Yeah. And I think the other piece is you definitely had elements of the DNC and a Biden presidential campaign that were working in concert or in collusion with Twitter, with Facebook, with Google, and these other companies as well. I mean, you could consider this, talking with Congressman Byron Donalds, you could consider this an in-kind political, I mean, at the very least, an in-kind political donation, oh. to say nothing of them acting as agents of state yet, but at the very least, this is an in-kind political donation. Well, actually, that was a point I made later on in questioning with, uh, with Mr. Baker that was there, because I was asking them, like, what kind of value do you put on this level of suppression? If you take a story as damning as not just you know, what Hunter Biden does in his spare time, but the actual business dealings that have been going on in the background for decades with Joe Biden and his son and his brother and how that impacts the, the, the potential of a Joe Biden presidency, that's key information for voters to know. To be able to take that out of the political ecosystem is almost invaluable. It's so it's it's all the opposition research campaigns love to have. It was taken completely off the table by social media and the big media followed suit. Yeah, I, I, I saw this letter and I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Abby Lowell, uh, attorney for Hunter Biden, responded to your oversight committee's request for records and suggested a meeting to include the committee's ranking member and said that, quote, rather than engage in back, back and forth letter writing campaigns or any formal proceedings, I would offer to sit with you and your staff, including the ranking member and his staff, to see whether Mr. Biden has information that may inform some legitimate legislative purpose and be helpful to the committee. She adds, I hope you will engage in this effort, end quote. It sounds like they want uh, some they, they don't want to be transparent. That's that's what I'm getting. I feel like they lost all authority to make any kind of requests like that when you had 51 intelligence agents sign on and say that all of this was misinformation and try to steer an election a certain way. What is your take on this? Uh, my take, number one, is I'm not going to trust anything that he says through these letters that are going to go back and forth. I want to see what he has to say under oath. Um, that's going to be number one. Number two, the, the subterfuge that was unleashed during the 2020 elections with these 51 intelligent officers who basically all came to the defense of Joe Biden, that is interfering in an election. That is exactly what they did. As much as Jamie Raskin and the Democrats want to talk about 2016 and Russia collusion, the collusion was happening right here in the United States by elements of the social media company, elements of the campaigns. And you know we got into some other stuff with the FBI, which is going to get unfolded um, in the hearings to come. Ooh, would you send out subpoenas? Would you would you demand that they appear if they don't seem very cooperative? Because it seems like uh, Attorney Lowell there is not going to be very cooperative. Um, I would lean that way, but you know the subpoena power lies with the chairman, and I think the chairman has used it judiciously already, trying to find ways where it can actually be used um, and executed. I think. One of the things that's happened on Capitol Hill the last couple of years with Democrat control is they're throwing subpoenas all over the place and they're really wielding this power uh, of, of Congress in an inappropriate way. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we're investigating appropriately. So if a subpoena is necessary, I don't see why Chairman Comer wouldn't use it. But sometimes 
just having somebody request, just making a request publicly for them to come in can be as effective. We'll see where it goes from here. Yeah, the, of course, the State of the Union, as I, I, I said, I'd, I saw you there. It was great to see you and, and talk with you. That was a very interesting State of the Union. And it seemed, it, I, we don't, I don't think we learned anything new about the State of the Union. I, I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on it because it seemed as though, the, I mean, the president didn't touch on the, you know, the spy balloon. He didn't hit on really anything foreign policy. Uh, it was a lot of, you know, tax the rich and... Uh, climate and it was just a really weird, weird address. What was your take on it? What did what did you think of the tenor of the room there? Well, I mean, first of all, it was a cheer fest for one of the worst uh, political and policy agendas in American history. The Democrats were were happy with everything that he said, but it made no sense. It sense it was incoherent. At one half of the speech, he's he's going after big pharma. On the second half of the speech, he's praising big pharma to help for helping with cancer. His cancer moonshot. He, he touched on the border for like a minute and just moved on as if it's no big deal. Mm. He tried to bring up fentanyl as if he has nothing to do with it. He barely didn't even touch inflation except for his Inflation Reduction Act, which is really the Green New Deal mm. wrapped up in a cool little tile, title. Um, he didn't really get into the meat, energy independence in our country. What's the plan on inflation? What's the plan on spending and the debt ceiling? He didn't touch on any of that. None of that. And then he tried to accuse Republicans of being nefarious actors, of, of, of trying to take away entitlements, which is not true, never been true. Uh, but that's the stuff he's wielding. It was a state of confusion speech for me. Yeah. Because I'm trying to figure out the America, the world that he's operating in, that where all his plans have actually worked. They just have not worked. State of confusion. That's a good way. That's a good way to put it. Talking with Congressman Byron Donalds, you mentioned the border as well. You've also noted that massive fourfold increase in illegal entries, four and a half million crossings. And at one point he brought up fentanyl and was talking about some some uh, family up in the box with the first lady. And there were some murmurs of, well, then secure the border, secure the border, because that is where it's where Border Patrol's telling us it's coming through. The cartels are making a lot of money off this. It's just so odd that he didn't tie those two things together. Do you think that at some point, I mean, I would just think it's got to get so bad that it, he's got to at least see some kind of reason and at least fold to compromise and work with with the Republican Party to do something at the border because this is it's out of control well the reason why he doesn't want to touch on it is because he's doing this on purpose you know people are saying oh we've always had uh people crossing the border illegally we've all we've always had encounters not like this mm. um it, it didn't happen under president trump president obama president bush not like this this is insane what's happening and it's all being done on purpose by joe biden and then they're trying to clean it up saying oh well we now have a new app and a new protocol where some people can go to, to go, they can go to the legal points yeah. of entry at the southern border. Well, all you're doing is 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 spreading the problem out. You're spreading the problem. It's like you know, you spill you know, you spill some wine on your on your on your shirt, and all you're doing is rubbing it around <laughs> to make it like spread out. That's all he's doing is spreading out the problem. Yeah. He's not solving it. He doesn't want to solve it because his base wants what's happening at the southern border. They want massive asylum claims which most of which are not legitimate asylum claims, but they want this longstanding process because what they understand is once somebody gets in the legal protocol in the United States, that takes eight to 10 years. Most people don't even show up for the second hearing and they're in the United States. Yeah. And then they'll come out and say, oh, we have all these people here illegally. Uh, we need to give them status. They're working so hard in our country. This is the game from the Democrats. That's why they don't want to touch it. Well, don't want to talk about it which is why Republicans are going to have to find a leverage point somewhere to force his hand to secure the border. Boy, and that's what it comes down to. Congressman Byron Donalds, you've been, I mean, just just straight fire on the Oversight Committee with your questioning and and just really, I mean, we had some of the best sound bites from, from you from your line of questioning on that and really insightful. Uh, I think it's really showing, you know, kind of the, the true faces of these executives. Good to have you on the program. We'd love to have you back. Good to see you at State of the Union. God bless you, my friend. Appreciate what you do. Thanks for having me on, Dana. Do it anytime. Yes, sir. Take care.